Lord, God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor here at Christ Our Life Ministries, located in Augusta, Georgia, on 308 Road Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520, heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my Sunday morning service, along with my member's brother, Roland, and his beautiful wife, Sister Brittany Pizzi, Sister Selena, and her beautiful husband, Stan, my brother, Minister Harvey Cole, and his beautiful wife, Sister Kimberly, my sister, Tanisha Pratt, amen. And we want to continue to remember, amen, Brother Harvey and Sister Beverly Conyers, amen. They was married, amen. Brother Harry went home to be with the Lord this week on Monday, amen. He went to join his beautiful wife on the other side of the grave, amen. They were pillars of this ministry. They were the ones when I was on the last leg of being feeling like I was called into the ministry. They were, Brother Harry was a truck driver. They were coming down to the plant that I was a, a security manager over. And Sister Beverly would always sit in there with us because she couldn't go in the plant. And we just grew, fell in love with each other. And every week when they came to that plant, Sister Beverly was like, you better have a CD for me. You better have a message for me. When it was just me in this church with 70 empty chairs, Sister Beverly demanded that I have a message for her every week. And so I came every week and preached a message to 70 empty chairs just to make sure that she had a CD to listen to every week of the Word of God. They were pillars here. I love them. I miss them. Hallelujah. We shall all join one another again one day. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining my sister church. Spirit of Liberty's ministries, Pastor by the phenomenal Minister Kenya King. And I'm telling y'all, if y'all missing Pastor King on Sunday mornings, then y'all missing some phenomenal teaching. He talked beautifully this morning about God's house and David wanting to build a house of God because God had been living in tents in the name of Jesus. You ought to join Pastor King every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. to be blessed and to hear a word from God. Hallelujah. I love him. I thank God for his fellowship. I thank God that we are united together. Amen. As a unit of one in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Not seeking fame, just seeking to feed the believers the word of God. God bless you, Sister Selena. Your pastor love you this morning. Thank you for joining me. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. There are over 450 highly anointed messages on my YouTube channel. You can join them and be blessed in the name of Jesus. I always preach different messages. I feel that if I spend time with God, then all of my messages should be different. I should never have to go back and re-teach uh, and re-preach a message. That's why there are messages on the YouTube channel for you to go back and listen to. But I'm always moving forward with new bread, with new bread. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Today's message, today's message, the conscience, the voice of the Lord in our soul. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And then the Lord gave man a commandment not to eat of a certain tree and that voice should have been in his soul. It should have been the conscience in his soul. And we're going to find out today whether or not the Lord's voice is in your soul. Our foundational verse, John chapter 10, verse 27. He says, my sheep, because y'all run around and y'all say the Lord is my shepherd. So if the Lord is your shepherd, then that makes you a sheep. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. My voice is in their conscience. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah. The conscience is the Lord's voice of righteousness 
within the believer. The Lord's voice of right, not, not the law of Moses within the believer. No, it is the Lord's voice of righteousness. God is looking for righteous people. God told Abraham, God says, God says it was that righteousness was accounted unto Abraham because he believed God. When you believe the voice of God, it becomes righteousness. This belief in the voice of God, which is called righteousness, must become your conscience and you must follow it until you receive the crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence and to tell you that we love you because we do. You mean everything to us. We're nothing without you, but we're everything with you. We're living in a dark world in a dark time where prophecy is coming true every day. The things that's taking place in Israel, the things that's taking place in the world, hallelujah, are beginning to line up with prophetic scripture. God, we thank you that we can hear your voice and that we follow you in the name of Jesus. Stay strong in our life. Stay strong in our hearts. Let us not turn away from the voice of the Lord. God, we love you. Thank you for this word. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me today. The voice of the Lord in our soul. The conscience. Hallelujah. There is a reason why born-again believers are not growing in the word of God, and it has to do with the conscience. The conscience is the voice of the Lord, is the Lord's voice of righteousness within the believer. The definition of the word voice is the utterance of words. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance, as the Spirit gave them voice. See, the conscience is the Lord's voice of righteousness within the believer. The utterance of words from the Spirit is related to the conscience. Spiritual words are nothing more than the Lord's voice of righteousness within the believer. And when we believe the utterance of words from the Lord's mouth, because he told us in John 6 and 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing, the words that I speak unto you, the utterance of words, the voice that you're hearing from my mouth. The utterance of words, they are the voice of righteousness and they should be inside of you. The reason why born again believers are not growing, are not becoming greater over a period of time in faith, in righteousness, in steadfastness, in uh, love, in the nine aspects of the spirit, the reason why they're not growing in these things has to do with the conscience. What is the conscience? It is the voice. It is the voice that keeps our mind stayed on him. It is the voice that keeps up, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's being said to you, no matter what's happening around you, it is the voice that keeps our mind stayed on him. We know that from Isaiah 26 and 3. Isaiah 26 and 3, God, is, God wants to show you what he's talking about today re, re, relating to the, to the conscience. He says, 
says, thou will. Who is thou? The conscience. The conscience will keep you in perfect peace. The conscience will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts it in thee. See, the conscience trusts in the Lord, but do we trust our conscience to the point to where we allow the Lord's voice of righteousness within us to guide us into the second eternity. Because of many believers' refusal to obey the voice of the conscience, their growth in Christ as his sheep is stunted. The definition of the word stunted, stunted is the stoppage of becoming greater over a period of time as lights in the world. That's what it means. You, 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 you're, not a, you're not a light. And God bless you, Sister Tanisha Pratt. Your pastor, I love you. Thank you for joining me this morning. We're talking about the conscience today. And because many believers refuse to obey the voice of the conscience, they choose to, 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 to walk in the dominant thought of the mind rather than obey the voice of the conscience, their growth in Christ as his sheep is stopped. You can read the Bible and pray all you want. But if the conscience, if the conscience is not stronger than your mind, you will not grow. If the, the conscience has to be. So, so my question to you is, 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 is the, the, the purpose of reading the word of God, the purpose of reading the Bible, the purpose of praying is so that whatever's, whatever it is that's, that's um, motivating you to read the word of God, whatever it is that's motivating you to pray, that is the conscience. And so if you're being motivated to read the word of God, and if you're being motivated to pray, then why aren't you obeying the, the conscience of what you're getting from reading the word of God and from praying? Why aren't you obeying that voice? Why aren't you obeying that voice of righteousness that is within you? You can read the Bible all day long. You can pray all you want. But if the conscience is not stronger than your mind, you will not grow. Mark 8 and 27 says, No man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the thoughts he got to first bind the strong man. He got to first bind the thoughts, and then he will have. Then he will spoil his house. His spoil is living. No man can in a strong man's house. See, can't, can't none of your thoughts. See, see, if your thoughts are stronger than your conscience, there's no way your conscience is going to be able to bind them thoughts of yours. And them thoughts of yours is going to spoil your living. They're going to spoil your living. Isaiah 55 and 8, say, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, utters the Lord. Because the Lord is always speaking with his voice, the utterance of words in your life. Stop saying that you got a relationship with God, yet your thoughts is stronger than your conscience. If your thoughts are stronger than the Lord's voice of righteousness in your living, then you should be living a life that is completely spoiled of defeat. Many believers refuse to obey the voice of the conscience. And because of it, they're Growth in Christ as his sheep is stunted. You can read the Bible and pray all you want. It doesn't matter. If your conscience is not stronger than your mind, you will not become greater 
of a, a period of time as a born again believer of Jesus Christ. First Timothy 1 and 19 says, holding faith and a good conscience, holding faith and a good voice of righteousness within you, which some have put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. God wants to teach y'all about this first Timothy verse one and 19 today. You see, you cause you got a lot of people that got good consciences, but the good conscience that they got has nothing to do with faith. They're doing everything good. And, and, and you should be able to do that because Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yet the word of God tells us in Genesis 6 and 5 that the thoughts and imaginations of the heart of man is evil continually, but man thinks his good thoughts are, 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 are acceptable by God, and they're not. Because Isaiah 64 and 6 says, all our righteousnesses, everything we believe, is as filthy rags. Everything we believe is as filthy rags. Hallelujah. So there's nothing that you can do good outside of faith that's going to please God. So holding faith, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, hearing by, we hear voice, we hear utterance of words, and so we take this utterance of words that we hear from scripture that we get from the word of God, hallelujah, and so we get the Lord's voice of righteousness on the inside of us, and then we hold on to this faith so that it can give us a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made secret. See, 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 see they'll, they'll keep a good conscience, but it won't be concerning faith. It, it, they, they got a good conscience concerning the law. They got a good conscience concerning helping the poor. They got a good conscience concerning uh, doing stuff for people during Christmas time. But they don't got a good conscience concerning faith, the very thing that pleases God, the very thing that we're supposed to be walking by. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Since my sister Selena, good deeds does not equate to good motives. Our motives can be wicked and selfish, and that's why everything good that we do, it must be according to faith. Holding faith and a good conscience with some having put away concerning faith. So the works that you do, the deeds that you do, are you doing them based off of faith or based off of something that you think is good that Isaiah 64 and 6 says is filthy rags? The good stuff that you do. Because it, once you do it, it, it sits in your conscience that you done done some good. But did you do it concerning faith? Or has your faith been shipwrecked and now all the good that you do, you do it based off of yourself. Because Jesus told the rich young ruler when the rich young ruler said, good master, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Hold in faith and a good conscience. I'm willing to say that over 80% of the people who will hear this message, do not have a good conscience concerning faith. Oh, you got a good conscience, but concerning faith you don't. Let's read here, Jonah chapter one, verses one through three. Jonah chapter one, verse one through three. Let's check Jonas's conscience. Let's check Jonas's behavior when the Lord's voice of righteousness that was inside him. Let's see what he did. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, 
and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. If the word of God, if your conscience tells you that somebody's wickedness has come up before God and you do not obey that voice, then that is because you, your thoughts is stronger than your conscience. The word of the Lord says that wickedness is come up before me. Are y'all afraid to tell people about that wickedness that is before you when you know that you're walking in obedience to the Lord's voice of righteousness, which is on the inside of you. But Jonah rose up to flee under Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare See, that's what y'all do. Y'all like, 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 like to pay a lot of money at Christmas time that they help people out. You like to pay, you like to do a lot of deeds to a bunch of people. You know, you, you like to do a lot of good stuff. But, it ain't, but, but when it comes to something concerning faith, you don't do it. Don't worry about nothing. I got something for you. Just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. I got something for you to answer your, whoever that didn't like that. So Jonah paid a fare. Oh, yes, yeah, Sister Tanisha Pratt, you know it's almost mirror time. You know they're going to get it. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it. See, that's what we do. We, we, we go into our thoughts. We, how, how do we, how do we, we ain't got a ship like Jonah got. So what we do is, we, we, Sister Tanisha, we go into our thoughts. We, we, because our thoughts is stronger then the word of God, the voice, the Lord's voice of righteousness that is on the inside of us. The conscience, the Lord's voice of righteousness within us. See, our thoughts is strong. So we, we go down into these thoughts. So Jonah paid the fare and went down into it. See, see, we do good stuff and then we go down inside of the good stuff that we did, which is not what God told us to do. <clears throat> and he went down into it to go with them under Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Every time you go down into your thoughts, you distance yourself from the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within you. And every time you do that, you're going to spoil your living. And then you got a lot of believers wondering why they're living a disastrous life today. And the reason why they're living a disastrous life is because the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within them is not able to cast down thoughts and imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God to bring it into captivity to the obedience of Christ. That is why they live a disastrous, unpeaceful life today. Because they are born again believers fleeing the presence of the Lord. Stop fleeing the presence of the Lord. His voice dwells and abides in the conscience. You need to stop fleeing the presence of the Lord because his voice dwells and abides in the conscience. Stop running away from the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within you. A good conscience concerning faith does not flee from the presence of the Lord. It does not flee from the presence of the Lord. A good conscience concerning faith hears his voice. It hears his voice. Churches will be filled today with believers Holding faith, whatever. What, what do you think? What do you think is filling up churches today? Faith. See, they, they they hold faith, but they don't hold it with the good conscience concerning faith. 
they hold in faith, but they are living a life void of a good conscience concerning faith. That's what Paul's trying to tell us here in 1 Timothy chapter 19. Chapter 1, verse 19. We're going to read that again. Hold in faith and a good conscience with some. Who is he talking about? He ain't talking about unbelievers. Unbelievers don't hold faith and unbelievers don't have a good conscience. So he's talking about believers here. Hold in faith and a good conscience which believers having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Their good conscience is shipwrecked because the stuff that they're doing is not based off of faith, but based off of deeds. You got a, lo a lot of born again believers today. Churches, churches going to be filled today with believers holding faith, but living a life void of a good conscience concerning faith. Void of a good conscience concerning faith. Why? Why? Bribery. Bribery. What is bribery? Corrupt influence from the self-life. Corrupt influence from the self-life. Jesus says in Luke 9 and 26, he says, if any man, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. See, you, 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 you got to walk. You got to walk in obedience to the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within you every day. You must never not pick up your cross. To not pick up the cross means that you do not have a conscience, a good conscience concerning faith. Because our faith should be in the cross. And if you don't got a good conscience concerning faith, then you're not going to pick up the cross. You're not going to do it. You're going to walk according to your thoughts, and them thoughts are going to bribe you into thinking that you're doing works concerning faith when you're actually not. Bribery. Corrupt influence from the self-life. Corrupt influence from self against a good conscience. The conscience is the Lord's voice of righteousness within believers. And yet many of us are living according to some corrupt influence because many of us are still slaves to a carnal mind. To a carnal mind that thinks that good works is going to get them into the second eternity when the only thing that's going to get anybody into the second eternity is faith. And that faith must be in the Son of God. And every believer has this faith within them. It is the Lord's voice of righteousness within us. It is the conscience. The conscience, here it is, watch this. The, why? Because the conscience cannot be bribed or corrupted. See, the mind can, but not the conscience. See, that, that's why That's why you got to have a good conscience concerning faith. You got to have a good conscience concerning faith. Because the conscience cannot be bribed or corrupted, but it can be seared. It can be seared. Seared means to burn the surface of something with sudden, very strong heat. See, see, the, 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 the fiery trial's going to hit you suddenly. And they're going to sear your conscience. But it's not going to be able to break through. It's, it's, just, going to, it's just going to burn the surface of something with sudden, very strong heat. That's the definition of the word seared. First Timothy chapter four, verse one and two, Paul tells Timothy says, now the spirit says in the latter times, 
Now the spirit speak of expressly in the latter days that some will depart from the faith. You know why they're going to depart, depart from the faith? Because they're going to have a good conscience but not concerning faith. They're still going to be good people. They're going to be good churchgoers. They're going to be good. They, they're not going to be people to curse you out. They're not going to be people to steal from you. They're not going to be the people. They're going to be forgiven people. But they're not going. But they're going to depart the faith. They're not going to allow the Lord's voice of righteousness to abide in them to the extent that it should abide in them. They're going to do what King Saul did. They're going to go and they're going to kill everything down there, but they're going to bring they're going to bring the best of the good back. See, see, y'all, y'all want to hold on to the good stuff, but 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 faith, but the cross kills it. The, the cross kills bad stuff and good stuff. But y'all don't want to obey the Lord's voice of righteousness within you because you like holding on to good stuff. And all of that good stuff that you hold on to is going to cause you to depart from the faith. And it's going to cause you to give heed to deceiving spirits. It's going to bribe you in your mind. It ain't bribing you in your conscience. It's bribing you in your mind. But because your mind is stronger than your conscience, you don't got the ability to withstand the, 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 the burning surface searing of Satan's attacks on your life. So you don't want to start giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. You are the most hip, um, the church people are so hypocritical. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Oh, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in my life. Yeah, but you, you sleeping, well, yeah, but you're in a relationship with somebody you ain't married to. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in my life. Yeah, but you support the LGBTQ community. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in my life. Yeah, but you out there with your Black Lives Matter supporting your Juneteenth supporting self. You got a good conscience, but it just ain't concerning the faith. So hypocritical. Are you what what y'all y'all scared to 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 be to come out from among them and be separate? If you're scared to come out to come out from among them and be separate, then that means uh, that you got a good conscience, uh, but you don't got it concerning the faith. You forget stuff. In the name of Jesus, Peter had a good conscience, uh, but not concerning faith, uh, cause when they begin to say uh, you was with him, uh, Peter said, "No, I wouldn't." In the name of Jesus, we got to stop saying uh, that we're not the born-again believers of God, uh, the sheep of God, uh, the ones that hear the Lord's voice of righteousness on the inside of us. We got to stand on the word of God uh, in the face of criticism in the name of Jesus. Stop allowing other hypocritical born-again believers to bribe you into thinking that they're living righteously. And you should be able to see that their life is one that's spoiled in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies and hypocrisy. Here it is, having their own conscience. Having their own having the Lord's voice of righteousness within them seared with a hot iron in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The corrupt influence of this world is going to sear the conscience. But if you keep your mind, if you keep your mind stayed on him, you will remain blameless in his sight. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, without the express sharp disapproval, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, 
in the United States is a crooked and perverse nation today. Very crooked and perverse nation is the United States filled with a bunch of churches holding on to faith, but not concerning faith. Holding on to faith, but not concerning faith because a bunch of them people's faith is shipwrecked because the world has bribed them in their mind to do good works rather than the will of God. That he may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light. You're supposed to be in the light that your son is not your good works. It's your good conscience concerning faith. But but don't nobody, don't nobody know, don't nobody know your walk of faith. They see they know your good works, but they don't know your walk of faith. Because if they knew your walk of faith, then they would know that you don't do the mess they, that they do. They would know that you don't follow the things they follow. They'll know that you don't watch the mess they watch. They'll know that. Oh, they know you're a good person, but not concerning the faith they don't. Not concerning the faith they don't, because you line up with them. You line up with them in their good works that they do that don't, that's not concerning faith. You should be shining as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. What is the word of life? The Lord's voice of righteousness within the believer, holding forth what the good conscience concerning faith is saying within you that is on display before the world. In the name of Jesus, without rebuke, without hip, without expression of sharp disapproval, you do not need no one to rebuke you. You don't need no one to rebuke you. Why? A good conscience concerning faith will rebuke you. If you got, if you got a good conscience concerning faith, I promise you. It will, my, I'm going to tell you, my conscience rebukes me. When I do mess that is not concerning faith that are actually good. Pastor King, I do good stuff, but it's not concerning faith. And so then my conscience rebukes me because my conscience says, man, if, if, if God would have asked you to do that, you wouldn't have done it. If God would have asked you to behave in that way, you wouldn't have done it. But you but you'll do it for Pastor King. You, you'll do it for Deacon Stevenson. You'll do it for Sister Selena. You'll do it for Sister Tanisha Pratt. But, but you won't do it for me. You got a you got a good conscience, but you don't, but it's not concerning faith. It's concerning your own filthy righteousness. A good conscience concerning faith will rebuke you unless unless you've been bribed or corrupted in your mind now if you've been bribed or corrupted in your mind a good conscience concerning faith will not rebuke you exodus 32 and 7 the lord said unto moses the lord's voice of righteousness said unto moses go Get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt. The people which thou broughtest out of the world have corrupted themselves. They thought it would be a good thing to build a golden calf and go back into bondage. They felt they had it better in Egypt than they had it in the wilderness, which was not the final destination. See, the way, 
the life we lived before we came to Christ is not better than the life you're living now. It's just that you gotta you gotta die to get to the second eternity. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Have a good conscience concerning faith until you get to the second eternity. And stop allowing the hypocrisy in the people of the world to bribe or to corrupt you in your thought process that is going against the Lord's voice of righteousness that is on the inside of you that you know. Moses, get thee down for the people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. All those years in bondage had seared their conscience, just like some of y'all. The cares of this world has seared the conscience of many believers. Yeah, I can hear y'all now. Oh, forget you, Pastor Red. Forget you, Pastor Red. I'm going to live my life the way I want to, and I am a Christian, and you can't say that I'm not. Who do you think you are? Oh, oh, I'm just a mirror holder. That's all I am. I'm just a mirror holder. That's all I am. I'm just a mirror holder. But the conscience is the mirror man. The conscience is the mirror man. <laughs> you know, you, 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 but you won't get one of these. You know, because because if you get one of these and you look into it, you, that, that 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 person you see in there, that per, no no no, how hypocritical you are! That person you see in this mirror, they know just how much of the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within you that you do not obey. You better. I'm the conscience is the mirror man. Pastor Red ain't the mirror man. Pastor Red is just a mirror holder. That's all. I'm just a mirror holder. Oh, but the conscience, the conscience is the mirror man in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to see your conscience uh, get you a mirror, and I promise you, your conscience will begin to start telling you just how hypocritical you are, just how good deeds you do that are not concerning the faith uh, of the word of God. Hallelujah. John 8, 1 through 9, the word of the flesh went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down, and then he began to teach them in the name of Jesus, and the scribes and Pharisees, people that think they so good, brought unto him a woman taken in adultery in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and when they were, they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, in the name of Jesus, voice of righteousness, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, voice of righteousness, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Uh, now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. Uh, we want to do something good, because uh, the law is good and holy and just, uh, but I'm carnal, sold under sin, according to Romans chapter 7, in the name of Jesus. Now Moses in the law, uh, not in the voice of righteousness, but in the law commanded us uh, that such should be stoned. Stoned. But what sayest thou, voice of righteousness? This they said, tempting the voice of righteousness that they might have to accuse him. But the voice of righteousness that was in Jesus caused Jesus to stoop down in the name of Jesus. And with his finger, he began to write on the ground as though he heard them not. See, that's what you got to do with your conscience. Uh, you can't hear other voices. Uh, you can't hear other people. Uh, you can't allow yourself to be bribed with good works uh, that are not concerning faith. Uh, so when they continued asking uh, the Lord's voice of righteousness, uh, he lifted up himself and he said to them, let him that is without sin among you. Hallelujah. Let him first cast a stone at her. And again, the voice of righteousness 
stooped down and rode on the crown. And then they which heard it, hallelujah, picked up the mirror man. They picked up the mirror man. And when they heard it, being convicted by the mirror man, by their own conscience, in the name of Jesus, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And the word made flesh, and the Lord's voice of righteousness was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Does your heart, does your conscience convict you? Hallelujah. Sister Tanisha says the person you see in the mirror is your truth that is correct. Sister Selena says that's why we do not follow our heart. That's exactly right, Sister Selena. It's deceitful and wicked. We do not know our heart, nor but we should know the word of God. Sister Selena, 100% correct. People following their heart, thinking they're good. But the good, the good conscience that the heart gives them is not concerning faith. It's concerning them old the more good deeds that they do. But the Bible says, by the works of the flesh shall no man be justified. By the works of the flesh shall no man be. I don't care how good of a work you do in your earth suit body, it will not justify you. The only thing that can justify you is you picking up the cross daily and following him, getting up on that cross and then allowing the Lord's voice of righteousness within you to order your steps in the word of God. Does your conscience convict you? Or have you been bribed or corrupted in your mind to disobey the conscience? Remember Lot's wife. She looked back. Her thoughts, she thought she could look back and still go move forward. She thought she could look back and still move forward. Samson thought that if he told Delilah where his secret lied, that she would be happy with him. The Lord's voice of righteousness. Lot's wife disobeyed it. The Lord's voice of righteousness. Samson disobeyed it. Achan, the Lord's voice of righteousness, went into Jericho and took of the accursed thing, disobeyed it. The man of God from Judah went back to Bethel and ate. He knew the voice of righteousness, but he still disobeyed it. Nadab and Abihu went before the Lord with false fire. The Lord slew him but they knew the Lord's voice of righteousness. Aram and Miriam spoke back to Moses because they had a relationship with God, but they didn't have a relationship with God like Moses did. Because, but when they, but they, their thoughts became stronger than who Moses was. The thoughts in them were stronger than the Lord's voice to them of who Moses was. Hallelujah. Have you been bribed or corrupted in your mind to disobey the conscience, to disobey the Lord's voice of righteousness that is on the inside of you? Psalms 107 and 20 says, he sent his word, the Lord's voice of righteousness within the believer, the conscience and heal them and deliver them from their destructions. He delivered them so that their house will not be spoiled. Their living, their living will not be spoiled. Their living will not be destroyed. Their living will not be a living of perfect peace. He sent his word, the Lord's voice of righteousness. His word is the voice of the conscience. Have you been bribed or corrupted in your mind to disobey the voice of the Lord? Have you? Have you? Have you?
the conscience, the voice of the Lord in our soul. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Notice he says, I know them, but he did not say that they knew him. And that's why he told them people. When they said, did, did, did we not prophesy in thy, in thy name? Did we, not, did we not heal the sick in thy name? Did we not do many wonderful works in your name? All, all, yeah, you, you did all these good deeds, but, but you didn't do them according to faith. You didn't do them according to the voice of the Lord in your soul. The Lord knows you, but the only way he'll know if you know him is if you follow him. Y'all like to say, order my steps in your word. Y'all know that the, that the Bible says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We know all about Jesus saying, except you abide in me and I abide in you. You, can, you. you can't do nothing apart from me. You can do nothing. And yet we still allow our filthy righteousness to govern our life. Everything outside of the faith that you hold, that you're doing, that is not concerning faith, is filthy rags. It is time for us to begin to allow Christ to do exceedingly abundantly in us above all that we actually think and stop thinking that we are good people. Because your thoughts are not his thoughts, neither are your ways his ways, utters the Lord. It's time for us to become greater than we are in this world as believers. And the only way we're going to be able to become that is obeying the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within us. Because we love to say, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And I'm going to tell you, that, 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 is, that is very hypocritical of people that know, that know they are not obeying the Lord's voice of righteousness that they hear that is in them. They, 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 they pack, they, they're, they're filling up churches today and they're going to church, they're riding the church in cars with people that they slept in the bed with and had sexual intercourse, but ain't married to. And the pastors know it. They go to church today and they know they're alcoholics and drunks and, and, and cigarette smokers and, 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 them, and them, them vapor smokers they know they're lying. They know they got unforgiveness in their heart. And the Lord's voice of righteousness ain't stronger than the thoughts that they're still slaves to. And they're running around happy just to call themselves Christians. But I'm going to tell you this. Judas Iscariot was a Christian. The man of God from Judah was a believer. I mean, it's by the grace of God that Jonah, the difference, what, what, what is the difference? What is the difference between Jonah and the man of God from Judah? Well, the difference between Jonah and the man of God from Judah was when God spoke to Jonah, he told Jonah was given an assignment. 
the man of God from Judah was just told what not to do. He, he, he didn't, he, God didn't give him a word to take to nobody. He just told him, uh, don't you, when you go, don't, don't eat nothing. Don't, I ain't asked you to talk to nobody. I ain't told you, to, I ain't gave you no word to give to nobody. Uh, you, I, 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 but you better not go back to Bethel. You better not go by the way that you, you better not eat nothing. You better not do, he gave, the man of God from Judah got the same instructions Achan got concerning going into Jericho. The man of God from Judah got the same instructions that King Saul, God ain't told King Saul to do nothing, but go down there. He, he, he ain't told him to give nobody no word. Jonah was given a word. The Bible says, my word shall not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that for what I sent it to do. That's why Jonah had, that's why Jonah was able to survive the disobedience to go to Nineveh. But when you get to Genesis chapter 2, I mean, in, in Jonah chapter in Jonah chapter one, that joker wasn't in Nineveh. He went to, but in Jonah chapter two and chapter that cat was in Nineveh. Once that big fish spit him out on the ground, the Bible says that Jonah, when the when the fish spit him out on the ground on dry ground, the journey to get from where the great fish spit him out on the ground to Nineveh was a three days journey. He made it in one day, and he didn't, he, he didn't have no Uber driver. He didn't have no uh, interstate road to drive on. He didn't have no car. He didn't have no camel. He didn't have no he didn't have no horse. He didn't have no mule. He, the, the Bible the Bible don't tell it. The Bible just says this guy made a three day journey in one day. This cat was moving, but not you though. Not you. You 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 don't move forward. You don't move forward. You don't move forward to hear the, the voice of the Lord's the, 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 the Lord's voice of righteousness within you to make you move nowhere. You still that same old born again believer stuck in your good works that ain't got nothing to do concerning the faith of Jesus Christ. And you wonder why, you wonder why you, everybody that's getting born again and getting saved, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life, after you, you wonder why they're prospering. And the reason why they're prospering is because you won't look in the mirror man. You won't look in the mirror man. Not you, you not you. You won't look in the mirror man. You won't look at your, you won't allow your conscience to guide you concerning the faith. Notice I said, don't, don't, don't let your conscience be your guide. If, if when your conscience guides you is not concerning the faith, you better catch that. You better catch what Paul says here. Paul is saying, you got to have a good conscience concerning the faith. We're going to read that again. Paul said, 1 Timothy 1 and 19. Holding faith and a good conscience with some having... So you got to put it away. You got to put it away concerning the faith. You got to put a, the Lord's voice of righteousness within you. You got to put it away concerning the faith having made shipwreck. That's something that you do. It's not something that, I, I mean, Adam and Eve had to put the word of God away to eat off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Cain had to put the word of God away to kill Abel. He had to put it away. He had to put it away. Samson had to put the word of God away in order for the Philistines to overcome him. We had to put it away. 
the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The conscience. The voice of the Lord in our soul. God sent his son into the world to save souls. When he sent his son into the world to save souls, he put the Lord's voice of righteousness within us because Adam and Eve put the knowledge of good and evil within us, within our soul. So the Lord takes us through water baptism, puts us, nails us to the cross, has us walk in newness of life, in obedience to the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within us. You have an unction from the Holy One. You have no need and no man teach you. You don't need Pastor Red to tell you nothing. All you need to do is do is exactly what Pastor Red does. Pastor, the only, the only thing Pastor Red does is study the scripture, find the word of God inside of the scriptures, ask the word of God to reveal to me the understanding of the scriptures. And when I do that, I begin to hear the Lord's voice of righteousness. And when I hear it, I do not disobey it. And I don't care what anybody thinks about my ministry. Because my ministry is founded upon the Lord's voice of righteousness that is within me concerning faith. Concerning faith. So that my faith, nor the people's faith that hear me teach and preach every Thursday and every Sunday is not made shipwreck. Thank you for joining me today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for the word today. Thank you for everybody that came to hear what you had to say and why not, and not what I have to say. Lord, it is your word that tells us what to do in our conscience. We do not plan for you. We just listen and obey you. May we never forget that your voice leads us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Oh, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for thou art with us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Oh, you prepare a table before us in the presence of thine enemies. Oh, you anoint our head with oil. Oh, our cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell. We're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever because the Lord's voice of righteousness is within us and we hold on to faith, having a good conscience concerning faith. God, we love you. We thank you for this word. May it not fall on deaf ears and may the hearer of it submit themselves to what they've heard you say today through this teaching. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining me today. I will see you Tuesday night with Pastor King, and I'll be back before you Thursday with another word from God. I love every last one of you. Amen and amen.